You alone we worship, repels showing off. And you alone we ask for help, repels arrogance. This advice encompasses worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with full reliance on Him and seeking His help. People are divided to four categories in their approach to this verse. All praise be to Allah and peace be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The meaning of worship in the Quran and Sunnah are profound. And we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divided in Surah Al-Fatiha between his servitude and the servitude of his servants. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him mentioned this division in two parts. One half is for Allah which is you alone we worship and the other half is for the servant which is you alone we ask for help. This division highlights the great importance of these phrases and their depth in the relationship between the servant and his Lord. There are mainly two types of servitude. The first is the servitude of compulsion and dominions, which means that all the creation are under the command and the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether they want or they don't want, our creatures are under Allah's control. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ وَهُوَ الْحَكِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ And also said, أَلَمْ تَرَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَسْجُدُ لَهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ وَالنُّجُومُ وَالْجِبَالُ وَالشَّجَرُ وَالدَّوَابُ وَكَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَكَثِيرٌ حَقَّ عَلَيْهِ الْعَذَابُ وَمَنْ يُهِنِ اللَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ مُكْرِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَفْعَلُ مَا يَشَاءُ The second type is voluntary servitude, which is the true meaning of faith and monotheism. The servitude of the believers who willingly obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship Him sincerely, they are the people who know their purpose of life and the purpose of their existence so they find peace and tranquility and they get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through their words and actions. When a believer recites, You alone we worship, they embody the concept of complete worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which involves perfect love humility and submission. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of the earth, heavens, and directs all matters of creation. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, إِنَّ رَبَّكُمُ اللَّهُ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ No one besides him has the power to benefit or harm. People are needy before Allah, seeking his help, relying on him in everything, big or small. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuha nasu antum al-fuqara'u ila Allah, wallahu huwa al-ghaniyu al-hamid. Seeking help is reflected in, and you alone, we ask for help. As for worship cannot be complete without reliance on Allah, seeking strength in obedience and help in life. In the hadith, the Prophet, peace be upon him, advised Mu'adh ibn Jabal, may Allah be pleased with him. O oh Mu'adh, I love you, so don't forget to say after every prayer, O oh Allah, help me to remember you, to give thanks to you, and to worship you well. This advice encompasses worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with full reliance on Him and seeking His help. People are divided to four categories in their approach to this verse. Number one, those who worship and seek Allah's help sincerely. They combine worship Allah and seek help both in belief and actions. They do everything that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and submit to Him with sincerity and love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ The second category, those who worship Allah without seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These people perform acts of worship 
but turn to others for their needs, which risks practical shirk by mixing obedience with acts of shirk. The third category, those who claim reliance without true worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These people rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only for their worldly needs, neglecting true worship. They seek worldly gains without a share in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, من كان يريد حرث الآخرة نزد له في حرثه ومن كان يريد حرث الدنيا نؤته منها وما له في الآخرة من نصيب Number 4 The disbelieving and arrogant rejectors These never believe in nor worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Denying and rejecting his favors and blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وقال ربكم ادعوني استجب لكم ان الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخرين Combining you alone we worship with and you alone we ask for help is the foundation that forms the servant's relationship with the Lord Ibn al-Qayyim said you alone we worship repels showing off and you alone we ask for help, repels arrogance. Thus, sincerity and reliance come together, and the servant attains humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet, peace be upon him, advises Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him. O oh, young man, I shall teach you some words. Be mindful of Allah, and he will protect you. Be mindful of Allah and you will find him in front of you. If you ask, then ask Allah. If you seek help, then seek help from Allah. This encapsulates the depth of monotheism and sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship is the main purpose for which we were created. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ However, worship alone is not enough. The believer needs Allah's help to stay on the path. That's why the divine order in the verse is to begin with worship, then acknowledge our need for Allah's help. The divine order is precise and profound. When a Muslim says, you alone, we worship, they affirm their sincerity in worship. True worship is complete declaration of loyalty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, affirming that he is alone deserves worship and obedience. Then comes, and you alone, we ask for help, as if we're saying, O oh Lord, since you are our God whom we worship, we seek your help alone in all our matters, for you are the only one capable of aiding us. This unity in worship is followed by unity in seeking help. Relying on Allah means turning to Him in all matters, big or small, and understanding that there is no strength or power except through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seeking Allah's help begins with sincere supplication and dependence on Him in all our affairs. This reminds me of when the Prophet, peace be upon him, told his companion Abu Bakr radiallahu anh in the cave, لا تحزن إن الله معنا Where reliance on Allah in the most difficult moments became a source of peace and confidence. Reliance on Allah was fundamental in the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A prominent example is in the Battle of Badr, where the Muslims were few and their enemy was much greater in number and resources. Despite this, the Prophet, peace be upon him, stood praying to Allah, seeking his help, so persistently that Omar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, said to him, O Messenger of Allah, be moderate in your supplication. Allah will fulfill what he promised you. This is strong 
dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought down the angels to support the Muslims. This story shows that reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coupled with taking the necessary means opens doors and makes things easier. Feeling despair is natural, but a believer overcomes it by turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trusting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never abandon him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Meaning Allah is enough for those who necessarily depend on him. The story of Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, when he was thrown into the fire is a wonderful example. He said, Allah is sufficient for me and he is the best disposer of affairs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the fire to be cool and safe for him. True reliance on Allah requires complete trust and leaving matters to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after putting in the required efforts. Dua is one of the greatest means of relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Dua is worship. Dua connects the servant with their Lord and enhances their dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet peace be upon him was consistent in making dua in every matter, big or small, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who helps. He taught us the dua of leaving the house. Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ Even in the things that seem simple, he would turn to Allah seeking his help and blessing. Worship is a complete acknowledgement of Allah's power and his right to be obeyed. While seeking help is the acknowledgement of our limited abilities and our need for Allah's assistance at every step. Worship strengthens faith and enhances our relationship with Allah. And seeking help reminds us that we are in constant need of Him. No matter how strong or knowledgeable we may be, the Prophet peace be upon him was always dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which was evident in his words and actions. He would say, اللهم إني أسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى demonstrating his reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even in his prayers for guidance and obedience it starts with training ourselves to depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every decision and every step a Muslim strives to be aware that Allah sees them and knows what is in their heart so they call upon him sincerely before undertaking anything. This includes major decisions like work or study as well as small everyday matters. By relying on Allah before any project or decision, we find that Allah blesses the results and makes them easier through this reliance and seeking his help. Relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings tranquility because it makes one realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is managing their affairs and is sufficient for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ This means that true security comes from relying on Allah. When a believer is reassured by the knowledge that Allah is with them, they become capable of facing any challenge and they remain calm in the face of difficulties. Peace is one of the fruits of the true reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدْ You alone we worship. وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينْ And you alone we ask for help is a declaration of complete monotheism and the acknowledgement of our constant need for Allah and a renewal of our commitment to live our lives in light of his guidance and teachings. Each time we recite this verse, we reaffirm our relationship with Allah, declaring that we are his servants who worship him sincerely and seek his help in all matters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who truly rely on Allah 
and sincerely seek his assistance. Jazakumullahu khayran for your listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.